This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 3, Section 3, Solving Conversion Problems. You should have watched that intro video on the factor label method. Here are my notes. He also called it the dimensional analysis. That's what I usually use. And he also, of course, said that this is common sense because it's a way to solve problems. So he gave you two examples, which he gets to after he explains the six degrees of separation, which I thought was just kind of neat. You might have heard of that before. And the why, right? Why do we need dimensional analysis? Why do we need this factor label method? Because it's a way of going from a quantity that you have or given, again, many different words meaning the same thing, and converting it to a quantity that you want or that you desire. So you're going to hear those words used interchangeably, but again, it's always a starting point and an end point, and then you just have to figure out those conversion factors on how to get from your starting to your end point. He came up with four steps. I believe in your notes, I'm going to give you a little bit more detailed steps. So I have more steps for you, but it's basically the same thing. Mine's just a little bit more detailed written out. So he went back to those... Um, examples and he said okay how many hours in a day well you already know the answer but at least he kind of was showing you again the process what where are those steps coming from he also then talked about seconds in 12 days so again a little bit more in depth right a little bit more understanding of what's going on uh, then he also talked about sig figs and as far as I'm concerned when we're doing these types of problems unless it specifically says give your answer to the correct sig figs I'm gonna say two decimal places is fine. So he gave you an easy one, this was more of a medium one, and then he gave you more of a challenging one. And he talked again about how you had to convert a top unit, like miles, into meters, and then a bottom unit of hours into seconds. So here we actually had to convert um, two units to two different units, and again, how that would look in the setup. He also talked again uh, about those sig figs, and again, I would have even accepted 24.58. Again, to me, two decimal places is perfect, but he also talked about how these conversions, the 60 minutes equals one hour, does not go towards sig figs, and the reason for that is those are infinite numbers. It's like a, it's like a, a, a quantity that will never change, and because of that, if we were to use sig figs with all of our conversions, we'd only ever have one one sig fig is in our answer because we always are comparing um, something to one. Uh, so that's the other reason why we do not count um, conversion factors in our in our sig figs. Uh, he talked about limitations, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so on to your notes packet. Your objectives for this section is going to be construct those conversion factors because they're equivalent measurements, apply this dimensional analysis to convert problems, solve those problems, and then of course uh, be able to convert those complex units using the DA system. Perhaps you have traveled abroad or planning to do so. If so, you know or will soon discover that different countries have different currencies. As a tourist, exchanging money is essential to the enjoyment of your trip. After all, you must pay for your meals, hotel, transportation, gift purchases, and tickets to exhibits and events. Because each country's currency compares differently with the U.S. dollar, knowing how to convert currency units correctly is very important. Conversion problems are readily solved by a problem-solving approach called dimensional analysis or factor label method. Okay. So nowadays, of course, it's a little bit easier to convert, especially like Europe. Every single country had its own money. Now a bunch of countries got together and said, okay, let's just deal with the euro. So that made it a little bit um, uh, more helpful, uh, but there's still many countries out there that have their own their own currency, so it's really important to know that conversion. So here's a list of the metric prefixes that yes, 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 you must memorize. I'm going to strongly suggest you put in your notes the biggest here to the smallest here. That will make things a little bit easier if you memorize them in this order. I want to remind you that the capital M mega is much, much different than the little guy milli, so make sure that your capitals and littles, it's going to be important here, just like your capitals and littles when you're giving me the element symbols. So I believe you have to write this, so pause, make sure that you have this written down. Remember that that base unit really is that one, and it's the grams, liters, or meters. It's going to be that unit without a prefix. 
So pause and make sure you have all this down, as well as maybe come up with a memory hook. I'm going to give you a couple of examples, but at this point, come up with maybe your own. And what I mean by a memory hook is that can you come up with something that represents 10 for DECA that's going to be bigger, larger than things that you know. Um, and hopefully, when you get together with your uh, classmates, when you're working on book work, you can share your memory hooks with each other and maybe fill in this whole thing. So pause and come up with some of your own. Hopefully at this point you've come up with some, but I'll give you some others. Uh, we've already talked about a hundred cents in a dollar, and notice again, the hundred cents, right, cents are smaller than a dollar. Uh, how about something like the Mega Millions Lottery? Uh, and again, mega to me means big, so millions of dollars there. Um, Hector to me is like an old man, so Hector, a hundred years old, uh, that's again what I thought of. And um, Desi, again, think about that dime is smaller than the dollar, so Desi dime. So maybe you've come up with other things. I know a couple people think, oh, 100 means um, century, but to me there's a hundred there's, you know what I mean, there's a hundred years in one century, so it's kind of going the other way. So try to come up with, if you haven't already done so, some memory hooks to memorize what these prefixes mean. There are some others. I thought this was pretty neat. You do not have to know all of these, but it's just a, a neat way to show you, again, the base unit and how there's so many units going up and so many units getting smaller. And the cool one that you all would like to know, of course, is the Google, and that's 10 to the 100th power. And these are some measurements to think about. Again, pause. We're not used to these measurements, right? We're not used to the meter. So again, this just gives you an idea of what these units would represent. So pause, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. I want to remind you, hopefully you're reading as you're writing and you're not just filling in those blanks. Now we want to remember that a conversion factor is a ratio of measurements, but they're equal to each other. Again, it's going to help to convert those units. And that's what dimensional analysis is. It's a way to solve those problems by converting those units. So pause, again, make sure you're writing in all those words carefully. So hopefully this makes sense. It's very similar to um, Mr. Montana, sometimes I call him. Um, it's very similar to what he came up with, but he only came up with four steps. Here I have eight, and it's just a little bit more detailed. Uh, and this one I really want to bring to your attention, number six. You might want to star that one, because I'm always talking about which unit is larger, which unit is going to be higher on that list, because that guy always, always, always gets the number one. So what do I mean by that? Again, we're going to put one with the larger unit. So if we see this conversion, the one goes with the meter because that's larger than the centimeter. Uh, and so that gets the one. And then if we look at the smaller unit, it's going to get that other number. So uh, that, that number comes from whatever that prefix is in our conversion. So that's why there's a hundred here because again, there's a hundred cents to a dollar. Um, so I'm always going to remind you the one goes with the larger unit and the other unit whether it is a prefix unit or a base unit, uh, will get the number that corresponds to the uh, prefix that's in that conversion. So pause, see if you can come up with an answer for this. So did you choose this guy or this guy? Hopefully this guy. So let's look at these problems, and you should not, not, not need a calculator, because again, it's in multiples of 10. So we're either moving the decimal place to the right or we're moving the decimal place to the left. So you should not need a calculator. So let's look at these one-step problems. I'm going to give you some examples. So first, it tells us to convert from a kilometers to meters. How do I know this is a one-step problem? Because I see the base unit of meters, again, a unit without a prefix. So I'm always going to start with given to, what's given to me over one and the reason for that is I want to make sure I understand this is our top number over a one bottom number multiplied by a conversion line always 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 the unit I have here is going to cancel out here I want to put them opposite of each other so what's going to be my unit up here well in this case the base unit because if I'm at a prefix unit I'm going to go to a base unit no matter what no matter what no matter what 
between these two units, the kilometer is bigger, so that gets the one. Kilo means a thousand, so I'm going to put that in the other spot. Now I can do the math of it, right? Kilometers cancels out, the ones I'm not worried about, so really I'm just multiplying by three zeros. So I'm going to take my decimal, move it three times to the right, and I'm going to get an answer of 36200. And I just put the point zero there so you can see the different zeros, the amount of zeros. But please, please, please add that unit of meters. Here's another example of a one-step problem. Again, how do I know it's one step? Because grams is the base unit. So I'm going to start with that information over one. I'm going to multiply by a conversion line. Grams is going to go on the bottom no matter what. Because I'm at the base unit, I can go to any unit. In this case, I'm going to go to hectograms. I'm going to look at that list and I'm going to say, well, hectograms is the larger unit. That gets the one. Uh, and hecto means 100. So again, I'm not worried about the ones. So this line means division. So now I'm going to take my number and divide by the two zeros. If I'm dividing, I'm going to move my decimal to the left two times and get this as an answer. And again, I always like to do 0, 0.0 so I know that uh, where my decimal is. And don't forget your unit. Now, two-step problems. And now, if I look at the two-step problems, okay, so first of all, I don't like this cubic centimeters, right? That's not on my list. So I want to remind you that that cubic centimeters really means milliliters. That's going to be a lot easier for me to deal with. So I know it's a two-step problem because I do not see a base unit, okay? So if I don't see a base unit, that means I'm going to want to go to the base unit first, and then I can go to any other unit. So I'm going to start out with my 250. At this point, you can put cubic centimeters or milliliters. I would accept either way over one times a conversion line. So bottom unit, this time I put milliliters because I know those two equal each other. And I know the conversion between milliliters and liters. This is what I mean. I need to go to my base unit before I can go anywhere else. Liters is larger. That gets the one. Milli means a thousand. Okay, so I'm not done yet because if I would be done, my answer would be in liters. So I'm going to multiply it by another conversion line. So there's that conversion line. I'm going to put liters at the bottom because I want to cancel out. I'm going to put deciliters up top. And again, knowing that list, the deciliter is larger. That gets the one. And deca means 10. So that number goes with that other unit. All right. So I'm not worried about the ones, but I'm dividing by 1,000 and 10. So technically, I'm dividing by four zeros. If I'm dividing by four zeros, I don't see the decimal, but I know it's there at the end. I'm going to divide, move that decimal place four times to the left to get that as an answer. Uh, and again, don't forget your units. So at this point, guys, you have to figure out, are you listening to everything I say and then writing it down, or are you doing it step by step, whatever works for you? So here's another two-step problem. Again, I know it's two-step problem because I don't see the base unit. So I'm going to start with microseconds multiply by conversion line. Microseconds to seconds. I got to go to my base unit because I don't know about you. I have no idea um, how many microseconds are in a decisecond. I don't know that conversion. But all of those conversions, uh, all of those uh, numbers that you had to memorize are related to the one base unit. So which one's large? the second that gets the one micro means a million I'm not done yet so I need another conversion I'm gonna put seconds on the bottom and the deci seconds on the top in this case the one again goes with the seconds because it's larger and deci gets the 10 now this is the neat thing we can cancel out these zeros as well okay so however many zeros I have up top and however many zeros I have the bottom with my conversions I can cancel out so this way I'm only really dividing by five zeros moving that decimal place to the left five times. So I get that as an answer or that. It's the same number, right? I have it in scientific notation or normal. It doesn't matter which way you give it to me unless I specifically tell you. And again, don't forget about those units. All right, guys, now it's your turn. Come up with, these are some practice problems. Come up with the answers. Make sure to show your work. Uh, if you need to, you can rewind. Uh, now they're mixed up, right? There's uh, one-steppers and two-steppers, so you've got to figure out which one's which. So hopefully at this point you paused, you tried at least these problems, and now I'm going to click through so I can show you the answers. Base unit, woohoo, one-step problem no base unit so there's the information that you need you need to go to your base unit first then go to millimeters 
Again, you can cancel out those zeros, so really all you're doing is multiplying by one zero. And again, you can give me the answer either way. Number three, ah, no base unit in the problem, so it's a two-stepper. Again, we can cancel out those zeros. Uh, and number four, ah, base unit because I see seconds. Woohoo! All right, real quick, I think this is one question. See if you can come up with the answer here. And hopefully you worked out the problem. I see that there is a base unit. So, aha, one step problem. Uh, and hopefully that makes sense. All right, guys, we'll see you in class.